What's going on, grappling fans? Who's the first one that looks like you're trying to pretend mentally in the game? We're just going to be all our matches up and be pretty slow. Man, that intro gets me jacked every single time I see it. What's up, guys? Chase and Michael here back at Flow Grappling HQ for another episode of Who's Number One? Episode 35, man. We're cranking through these things. And a uh, great way to start off the week. We have a very special guest today, six-time world champion Lucas Lepre calling in. How you doing, Lucas? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm very well. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Of course, absolutely. Appreciate the time. And we also have our regular co-host, Bear Katiga from Show Your World, joining us today. I just butchered your name. Leave me alone. I think it's going to be all right. Bear, what's the proper pronunciation <laughs> for your last name? It's get, all right. Can, it's all right. How Lucas you say it? say it? No problem. Kitu Gua. Kitu Gua. You say it really fast. It sounds like, it sounds like a real thing. <laughs> Anyways, got a very exciting show. Got a lot of matches to, to break down, things to talk about. Uh, Michael, where do, where do we begin today? What's the run of show? Lucas, what are you up to these days? I think that's the obvious first question for everybody, right? Like, what are you doing these days with the quarantine and the lockdown and all that? What are you up to? Man, so uh, basically, like, you know, I try to stay at home, of course. Uh, you know, stay safe. And uh, uh, so, like, wor work out from home as well. And uh, also, like, you know, uh, I have been uh, video some uh, techniques to my online training program to all my students, you know, and then also we are doing, like, some virtual classes with them as well. So, and work out. There's not, not much to do it. Uh, play with my daughter. And that's it. <laughs> What, what hey, about Lucas. you, Bear? Bear, what kind of workouts are you up to these days? What are you doing out there in California? Drinking Tia Chico's and on the weekend. <laughs> you know, I'm in, I'm in, I'm going to join uh, AA meetings probably after this whole thing's done. But and do more. Doing a lot of curls, a lot of arm curls. <laughs> but I think even more important part is uh, like super curious on Lucas's side on this whole like time when you're st you're staying at home. Most people don't know that like Lucas is like a fanatic with like exercising or staying active. So now that he's outside the gym. I'm curious on how he's like what he's doing at home to kind of do different exercises when he's so used to doing it outside or in the gym. So. Is KP still standing your workouts, yeah. Lucas? <laughs> yeah. So like basically, yeah. So I'm gonna I I keep going. I keep uh, doing exercise. Uh, I have on my garage. I have the equipments that I still active. You know that I can like uh, do lift weights. I do a lot of like uh, resistant bands as well. And uh, I biking nearby my house as well. So try to always keep active. You know, I like to be that, you know, and uh, skateboard as well. I love it. And uh, yeah, most, you know, I try to stay active. I do How many like times a, a day, Lucas? How many times a day? Let's be honest. Six times a day, 12 times a day? <laughs> no, Come on. no, no. Tell you, people, tell is, people, is, tell people what. <laughs> Is one time a day, like my workout, and then I do cart as well. I do like biking or roll machine on the end of the day. I try to stay like uh, create like a routine and follow that routine. You know, I think that's important because if you don't do that, you're gonna kind of feel lost on the time and you know on the days. I think it is important to create like a routine and follow that routine. And uh, yeah. <laughs> What do you think for like uh, beginners, for like people who aren't as far along in jujitsu? Like, what what is the best way to say for like white and blue belts at home to improve their jujitsu when they can't go to the gym? You think? Man, I, you know, like I think watching techniques and fights, I think helps a lot. You know, beside like you can watch, and then also like I think you know watching uh, helps a lot as well as I'm saying, but. If like if you wanna like break down a sweat and do some do something, you have to drill it. You know you can find like I don't know, maybe you get you can get the the gi, the jacket and drilling some guards, you know, or do yourself like some I don't know. Let's see like uh, uh, hipscape, you know, some some things on the on the wall that you, you can do it, you know. Uh, but basically, like you know if 
watching fights and watching techniques, you can learn a lot as well. Are you a guy who likes to study your own matches, Lucas? Like after, after a tournament has ended, do you go back and see, you know, kind of review what you did, what you liked, uh, maybe some things that you didn't like? I'm sure there aren't very many of those, but uh, is that something that you like to do? Yes, man. It's like, you know, even though, like, for example, when I compete the awards on Saturday, I when I get the hotel, I usually go to the hotel and start to watch my, my, my fights again and see what I mistaken, what I can improve it for the next day, you know, like I'm I'm kind of that guy that I check my fights a lot and see what I can adjust it. Man, that's really cool. Uh, do you have anything that comes to mind specifically, like uh, after the last World Championships, like did you notice something that you did on Saturday that you implemented on your game on Sunday? Was there a specific thing that you said, oh man, I got to tighten that up or that, that wasn't as good yeah. as it should be? Yes, uh, I was like the first... The first uh, fight, I let the guy put me on the on the on the lapel guard, and then he was able to hold me a little bit. So, and then I was like, uh, because usually I work on the prevention, you know. So, and then I I was too late to to stop the guy and and prevent it. You know, the guy get there, and then but and then finally he was able to get there, and then I was. I was studying to see, okay, for the next time, if you want to try to do this with me again, the next day I have to prevent better, you know? I have to, to be quickly. That was one of, that I can remember now, that was mm -hmm. one of the the thing, you know? You're, uh, I mean, the lapel game is so popular now. Everybody's doing it. And now that you said that, I realized you're somebody that I don't see ever really get tangled up in it. Is, do you just really focus on preventing it ahead of time? Just not letting people get those grips on you? Yeah. So I work on the prevention, but I work as well. You know, be, I, I have a few students, not a lot, that work on the, on the lapel game. And then I work on the prevention. And I work also, we do a lot of is, uh, is specific training. And let the guys get in the position very deep, and from there I go, you know, and try to figure out the game. So, yeah. So I think the prevention for any technique is not just the the lapel game is the key. Lucas, you said you said you said something super key in there, like you and a lot of other people, Bouchesha and Marcelo. You said like something that a lot of people don't really pay attention to, and you said prevention. So as opposed to like going into the person's game. Um, it seems like really, really high-level athletes do a really good job in making sure they're doing everything they can before they get stuck in the spot. Is that a big focus of you and like some of the people yeah. that you've watched and admire? Yes, I think it's like you no. Know, for example, about my game, I don't, I don't like to study my opponents. I focus a lot on my game, what I can improve, and then what I can work on the prevention as well. It can be the bring ball or. or or 50-50, or lapel guard, you know, all kind of position that can stuck me. The guys can hold me and make some strategy. Uh, you know, like I focus to don't let the guy get on the position, you know. Of course, so, so, sometimes it can be hard to, to, to avoid the guy gets there, you know, but I, you know, I, I work a lot of on the prevention that you guys can see that I don't stuck much on the positions. I don't like the guys get on the positions much on me. So uh, it's, it's funny that you brought up watching tape because we wanted to watch some of your uh, matches here that we have in our uh, archives right now. The first one I was going to show was actually from uh, one of your more recent matches from the 2019 Worlds. It was the uh, semifinal versus Rodrigo Freitas. There's some really cool passing sequences and stuff in here. So we'll just uh, play the match, and you can just talk us through it as, it, as it's going on. If you want to cue that up, Caleb. Okay, okay so, so good, yeah. yeah, I know that I knew already like he, he's going to pull guard. Uh, so and then I was studying a little bit. Exactly. I just let him pull guard first and then from there. I fought Rodrigo like a few times. I knew a little bit his game. You know, he goes to the Omoplata. But and then I escape very well on the last. So that's my trademark pass. I escape, you know, putting my elbow up and put his feet up. That I can stuck my head, stuck my head inside and 
and start you know passing very low and then I switch the, the sides a lot you guys can see that I don't fight much to pass one side you know I always change the directions uh, look that my knee goes over and block his leg and then I immediately I start go to my right to his left side and back up a little bit and then I start put the pressure again so and then I'm gonna wait a little bit and increase the pressure looks like I'm not putting pressure but I still put in some pressure that his head gonna be flat on the floor looks like he was free but he at, at the same time he wasn't you know and uh, I'm just like waiting for the best time for me to keep going so I think patience the key you know patient and start get like the precise techniques on, on the right time I think what make the difference so my hand he was putting the last arrest I was putting my hand out is that now I was able to get tight lower myself and start you know apply the fold passing now you guys can see that I'm gonna switch the direction again very soon I go I start going to my left side and then I'm gonna switch and start go to my right side look that controlling the back over there I'm controlling the guy's hips and make him turn a little bit putting him very uncomfortable now I'm gonna break the grip from the collar wrap his collar over the, the leg you see because he was trying to put the last so I just put my arm out and rear grip again so now I apply the leg drag now so now is the time that once I get over there so it's the position that I like a lot so most of my fights I finish from, from the back so when I get over there like I know that I'm I feel at home and then now it's like inch by inch I start to adjust the position you see that when I put the first hook in, you guys see that I lock the triangle. This triangle I use a lot from the back because I control his hip very, very well. His hip's gonna be super tight from there. And you prefer to stay there, right, Lucas, and isolating the hip yes. before forcing the second yes. hook? Exactly. This triangle is super tight, very, very looks like he's free but he's not free yeah the way you're going through and hooking his ankle there for a minute too it looked like a lot of control on that leg is uh and then i go get over there until i find a really good grip and then as soon as i grab it and then i can uh put my hook here you know my set my second hook in. when are you looking to release lucas if he turns or do you just keep that control the whole time so you see that I'm gonna come with like uh, I keep holding until I grab the collar. Once I grab the collar, and then it's the time to release it. Got it. Because I can't finish from 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 the back without any hooks in. Shoulder pressure that he he wasn't able to escape the head. And He's looking so start to <laughs> Yeah, this whole time. So now I start putting my leg on top, and then I was able to finish. Is that the grip you prefer for the bow and arrow right there? The way you underhook the leg instead of grabbing the pants? No, actually, like I like the traditional one. Grab uh, both hands on the collars, like a zipper choke. Yeah, that's one like I I I finish most. But the I just grabbed the the leg because I saw the opportunity. And then I just went for. So, you displayed a lot of uh, a lot of different passing styles there. I mean, you even went to an over under at one point. Uh, something I want to talk with you about is sort of your passing style and and how you developed it. Uh, I'm a big fan of your passing. Uh, a funny story to tell you is back when I was an instructor, when I used to teach kids jujitsu, at one point I gave them all like a, a worksheet, like they were in school, and they had to watch certain matches of yours and tell me why you were changing the grips and why you were doing this and that with your passes, but. You, you you changed so flawlessly from like going 
the way you always start, you crouch down. You really love that that collar grip. Explain a little bit that collar grip, what you're doing with it. You, you I mean, like at one point there, you pulled Rodrigo's back up the mat. How do you control people with that collar grip to start? Yeah, that is the head collar position that I like most when I grab the collar. I know that from from that I have so many options. I can cut. I can start passing to both sides. I feel very comfortable on that grip collar, and. Uh, so that's how I developed, you know, my game with uh, Margarita and Terere. I think that was my two inspiration, you know, uh, games on the back back on the days when I was like, you know, blue, purple, and brown as well. So I had the opportunity to train with uh, Terere, and uh, you know, like both styles, like you know, and then I start mix it up because Margarita, Fernando Margarita, he was like cutting the knee a lot, you know. I remember that when I started and watch his his fights, and then that one thing that you know he was cutting the knee, going to the back, going to the arm, knee and belly. So that kind of style that you know I was I was looking forward to implement to my game, and did it as well. You know, like was uh, passing, fold passing, go to one side to the other. That transition, you know, I think I got from him. Uh, and my basics from my first professor, Elan Santiago, you know, like, you know, he's really good instructor, really good professor. And then he gave me all the foundations. Yeah, I think it's important to have it with that foundation, like what that means. So he, the way that he taught me, he taught me like, uh, he said, look, you need to be a complete fighter. You know, he, he started like uh, explaining and uh, you know how I need to understand all situations. So that's what's like I started to do it. You know, I start to understand all all situations from the close guard, half, lasso. You know, like all kind of situations, and uh, gave me you know the the confidence and uh, and the knowledge to start like uh, you know. Uh, work on my own path as well start find my own game and i start to understand you know and study uh later on other type of games as well you know so i think because when you have a really good foundation you know it's going to be easier for you to understand other type of games so that's interesting yeah. because Hamilo said uh, the other day too. Remember, he said he, he started knee slide because of uh, Margarita. That's true, and so, Terry's name has come up more than once yeah, as well. Yeah, those are two guys everybody based their passing off. Uh, so another thing I like about your passing is uh, the way you use your elbow when people try and lasso you. It's like a, it's like a little game within the game that it's like you know you get the collar grip and you're using your elbow to to avoid people controlling you with the lasso. You do so well with it. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, back on the days, like I had a really hard time to escape from lasso. You know, I don't, I don't remember when, but fear is back. You know, and then I start working. You know, with that escape, that I kill one leg first, and then I start using my elbow in. That automatically I start putting my opponent's foot, you know, down towards my chest, and then I start lift, and then I start like seeing that I, I was able to do very easy. And then I start implement more, you know, and then I start doing specific training. And then also I always do it the way that I do not let my opponent apply the omoplata triangle, you know. And then I start drilling and do a lot of specific for that to prevent the guys. Looks like the guy's gonna be able to apply the omoplata or triangle, but the guy cannot apply it, you know. Uh so yeah that's like why i start to work a lot this type of passing because because of this before i was stuck too much on the lasso i was feeling very i remember like back i think 2009 or 2010 i fought like a kid his name is uh his name uh max uh what's his name he was from Ribeiro, I think. I don't remember. But he has really good guard, the lasso. Uh, anyway, so, and then I, I was... Zach Maxwell? Him. Zach Maxwell, exactly. Yeah. Zach Maxwell. Yeah, so he has really good guard, you know, lasso. And then I, you know, I win. I won the fight you know, by three points, but he put the lasso like I couldn't, 
you know, escape. I said, man, I need to work. And then I, when I come back home, I said, man, I need to work more on the lasso. And then's the time that I start, you know, work a lot, do a lot of drilling. And on these days, I feel very comfortable to escape the lasso, you know. But back in the days, on that mat specifically, you know, I think open my eyes that there that I, I need to work more. Uh, you mentioned training with Terry Ray. Was that at Fabio's place? Was that in Sao Paulo? Where, where were you training with Terry Ray when you were color belt? So Terry Ray, I trained with him when I was purple and brown belt in Sao Paulo uh, on his academy. It was a Terry Ray and Telles. The TT team. that time. Okay. TT team, yeah. So, yeah, it was me, Andrea Galvão, Fabrinho, Michael. It was like a huge team, you know, Serginho. It was a really, you know, very tough team over there. And on that time, I was purple and brown belt. And Terere, for sure, for all of us, was the mirror, you know, that we want to follow, want to, you know, uh, had the uh, the mirror, you know, to follow. What, whatever he was doing, we are follow him. You know, whatever he said to us to do it, you know, guys, you have to do this, have to do that, the specific training or conditioning, you know, we try to follow him because he was, we were like, we're seeing him on the top, you know. Lucas, that's no, a... The, you, go ahead, Bear. Go sorry. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it's a no, pretty it does, crazy you room. Just, you, you said an interesting thing, too, and I think that's also really interesting because at that time when everyone was training with Terere at Telus, um, that's when the, the, broke, the break happened as well, and most people went to Braza, most top competitors. You were one of the very few that stayed at Alliance. Um, how was that, and was there a bunch of people that stayed during that transition and what made you stick to stay with the Lions as opposed to go with like the powerhouse of Braza at that time after the break? So actually like on that time I was brown belt and uh, I was just like follow my professor Elan and then you know like and then Cobrinha and uh, you know Michael was, co was Cobrinha student as well so and then uh, Serginho, you know, like a few guys, we, we decide to go to Alliance, you know, but, and then I just, actually, I just follow my professor. He, he decided to go to Alliance because Terere was telling, you know, us to go to Alliance. And then like, you know, and then we went to Alliance. So That's cool. Because like, we're, we're like on that time, I, I remember like, you know, a little bit that, about that. I didn't decide anything because my my position was like you know wasn't the professor yet but yeah. uh, i remember that you know like everybody talk about like how alliance has really good leaders fabio jacare so they're like Gigi. they're trying to find a team that uh has really good leaders you know can can be also organized uh, and then we just decide to go to Alliance because so, of this. Cool. And then they also told us to go to Alliance too. When you were at TT team, you said you were there as a purple and a brown belt training under Terry Ray. Who were the other color belts there? Because that was a crazy list of people. Man, when I got there, I was like a uh, purple belt. So Andrea Galvão was purple belt. And then <laughs> soon he, he switched to brown. But And then Cobrinha was brown belt. Michael Lang was blue belt. Uh, Sergio Morai was purple belt as well, or brown belt, something like that. What did uh, the uh, the average training session look like? like how how is the class like when all those guys were in the room together? It's like a whole bunch of Hall of Famers <laughs> as, as blue and purple and brown belts together. That's pretty. Yeah, good. so I yeah was uh, the train over there, guys. It was super intensive, super intensive. You know, the train was like was two hours of training, and man, it's like every single guy was a war. You know. I, I remember like one time as well, like Mendes was, uh, Rafa and Gui was uh, blue belts as well. Juvenile, Ari Farias as well was like, I think was blue belt too, or green belt. Uh, <laughs> man, it was crazy, you know. The guys was very young, but they're super tough already, you know. How, how, how much have you trained with Langi in your life? Because, I mean, you guys obviously closed out a lot of stuff together. You came through the same system like that. You said, uh, was Langi always one of your main training partners? Yeah, so Mike and I, we, we know each other, like, since I was purple belt, and then he was blue belt, and then 
we train in Sao Paulo all the time. And at one point on my career that I went to Sao Paulo and he let me stay in his house. You know, and then at that time we were like in, at five was already at Alliance. So, and then I stay with him, you know, for like, for a little bit as well to training. Uh, because like my hometown is very far away from, from Sao Paulo. You know, I used to go all the time back and forth, maybe eight hours by bus. Uh, so, yeah. So at that time, I, I, I used to study. I used to go to the university to study business. And then every time that I need like uh, training, I have like, uh, I need to push myself more for, I don't know, maybe I came for, for, for Brazilian nationals or for the world championship. I used to go to Sao Paulo, stay there a little bit, like maybe two weeks before a big tournament, training, co compete, and come back home. And that was my life until I moved to New York. Did you have a lot of success at like uh, Purple and Brown Belt, or did you start having success at, at Black Belt? I, yeah, so actually like uh, Brown Belt, I took second at the Worlds. I won the Brazilian Nationals. Yeah, but, you know, Pan Am, uh, Pan Ams, I took third, uh, my weight and the open as well. But the first place, like a big tournament, came up on 2007. My first year as a as a as a black belt. Wow, amazing! All right, so uh, I wanted to move on to so we got a few more matches to play. Uh, there's a run when you took uh, second in the open class last year. Is something that people are all, always crazy about. Uh, I have a couple of your matches from that uh, run to to pull up. Uh, first, we're going to watch you versus the big guy, uh, Saif, if you can pull that thing up. Okay. So this is, I mean, if you want to start playing that thing, what's your strategy against somebody who's, uh, maybe skip forward a little bit, Caleb. Sorry, I didn't realize that I had this. Okay. Look at, what's your strategy here? Okay, just, uh, I cannot see the, the whole, let me see here. Sorry, guys. Okay, now it's better. Actually, like, compete at the Open was like, I don't compete much, but I was, I want to challenge myself. And uh, to be honest, when I saw that guy, I said, man, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I said, man, I can, uh, I'm going to see, I, I, I'm going to see if I'm going to exchange few takedowns, you know, but when I, when I, get closer to him and then I start feeling the grip I say man I cannot do it and then I pull guard <laughs> but you know but that's important to play guard as well like most of my fights I play guard too you know and I feel very comfortable on my guard so I train with a lot of big guys not big like him you know but but I train like I actually I train very well with a big uh, with big guys too and uh, I say, okay, so if I keep him a little bit away from me, you know, and then maybe I'm going to get the omoplata. So that was the first idea, to go to, to the omoplata. But as soon as he tried to get up, that su surprised me a little bit. I thought he would stay on the knees. But as soon as he standing up, I say, man, that, that's going to be the, the time that I have it. And then I just use the setup guard, and then I swap him. Yeah. So this, this that was just the biggest guy you ever fought, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so that was keep him away a little bit and see that I was able to go to the Omoplata. But and then he was trying to get up, and then I just let him to go, and then I just set up, get the sleeve. Once I set up over there, I knew that I was able to sweep him. Right here is crazy. Look at him. So now, <laughs> yeah. so now the, the capoeira balance helped me a lot. <laughs> so, and then I took the back, but and then he tried to get up. That uh, was a little bit scared because I thought he was throw me. If he throw me, he would end up like on top of me, you know, and then I, for sure I would, I would hurt my rib if he would decide to throw me. Is that why you went to this, Lucas? Is that why you transitioned? Because you were kind of you didn't want to like jeopardize getting slammed on the roll. Exactly, exactly. So now I gave up the back a little bit, 
until I was able to find the caller, but I wasn't I wasn't able to find the caller at, at this point. I put the hook in and, and then I tried to pull him, but not not very success with that. <laughs> So it's a lot of weight to move uh, around. I don't blame you for not being able to pull yeah, that yeah, one. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you went to the absolute at Euros, they give you Saeed for sure. Because they did it to Lucas and then they did, they did it to Mikey the, the next year. If you're a smaller guy going to the absolute, this is your punishment. <laughs> uh, how, was it, were you, how was it getting the hooks in? Was it tough to get, get the hooks in or were your legs long enough? No, no it was easy, but I have to to be aware because any any mistake, I'm going to end up on bottom. On, on the, You know, like I cannot... I didn't rush because of that, because any any mistake, I would end up on board, and then from there, it's going to be, man, it's going to be the end. <laughs> 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 so, at, at this point, at this point, I tried to put him down, but at the same time, and then he was grabbing my, my, my belt, now, okay, you see? So, now he's going to grab, look at that. So, now, if he threw, he, I... I was very Oof. careful now because if he throw me, for sure he's gonna end up. He he's gonna land on me, and then I'm gonna hurt some something, you know, for sure. Yeah, it's a tricky situation. Yeah, and if then, he just falls over, it's gonna to, hurt you. And then I have to to give up and throw him. Yeah, throw him a little bit. I'm gonna drag him. Actually, I'm gonna drag him. With my right hand, I grab his uh, lapel on the other side. So notice that my left and my right hand on, on, on the same lapel. Lucas, so what do you like to I'm call gonna... that control leg, the one that's going across there? I've heard it called a broomstick. Do you, do you call that anything? No, I just cross leg. I, I, I didn't put any name. So that one I used it like back in the days with uh, on the semifinal with uh, Picapau. I used the same one as well back 2017. Now I draw, I drag him to to the mat and then. The camera guy fell asleep there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, people don't know either. The arena is going nuts at this point. People oh, are going yeah. crazy. The whole Euros place is was definitely erupting. one of the coolest places to watch did, a match. Did like you this. feel that energy, Lucas? Everybody rooting for you in this match? Yes, actually, like, I don't, man, to be honest, like, I, when I go to the mat, looks like I have a tunnel. I don't see much around me, you know? Mm. I'm just like, I get a zone that I don't, I don't listen much. I just, like, just go on, on the flow. How deep are your grips here, Lucas? Are they already kind of pretty, pretty deep? What was the deep, was deep, yeah. You're... So that that I was look I was looking for since since the, the the beginning, you know, I was trying to find a good grip before I go. Because that, when you're going I against say, a really like, big guy, yeah. is that what you're always shooting for, Lucas? Is the neck? Try trying to stay is away the from neck. the arm, is trying the to stay away from the arm. Uh, because, because on the arm on the arm the guys can escape easily. Just putting the weight on you, you know, but on the neck, once your hand is going to be on the right place, it's hard for them to, to escape. Uh, let's just see this hand raise real quick before we go to the next round because this is crazy, the, the size disparity <laughs> can really here. see it, yeah. yeah. How tired were you right now, Lucas? Were you, were you feeling a little exhausted or just relieved at this point? I was, I was tired, but, you know, I use a lot of fainters, but was tired, but was okay as well. So now you win that I one. Think, I think I think the I think like with Kaina, Kaina, I got exhausted. You know. Yeah. So you win that one, and now you go against another big guy, Kainan, who is a very technical, world class big guy. So uh, we can clue that one, uh, cue that one up, uh, Caleb. This match was crazy here. Yeah. With that, with that guy, my my grips was a little bit tight already. My my forearms. That usually is not, but with that guy already, I was feeling my my forearms. But for sure, with Kaina was like I end up like exhausting. Huh? 
Had you studied much of Kynan before you, you faced him? Uh, he was definitely coming up in the ranks and done a lot of big things, but that was the start of his, his really big year. Yeah, he was a new black guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, what did you know about Kynan going into this match? Man, I I saw him compete, of course, you know. I saw that he was the upcome kid from the from Brown Belts. But uh I didn't as I said, I don't watch much the fights, you know. And especially on, on the on the open division that I just go over there a lot of time to, to test myself and of course I wanna like win. But uh but actually, the European wasn't my my plan to to compete the Open. No, what, cha what uh, yeah. changed your mind? How did you decide? <laughs> Man, Surprised I me. just like when when I actually like when I saw it, I saw the full grappling. You guys posted. I said, "Shit, man! Somebody, somebody." register me there you know, I don't know. <laughs> hold on pa pause this real quick Taylor, before we watch this match uh we got to get more into that what some somebody else signed you up it was it wasn't us yeah. i mean it was definitely good for us but I, we didn't I, do it <laughs> I, no serious man i was like i was with my student john carlo and i said john carlo man look that man the guy's post that i'm i'm like on the open division <laughs> Shit. i signed up on the open division i said man look that i didn't you know <laughs> do you ever find out who I, did it? <laughs> no, I like I asked my first teacher that you know Elan was there. I said, Elan, it was you. He said, No, it wasn't me. Man, I didn't know until, until now who signed me up on the open. Oh man, well <laughs> people watching this at home, if you know who signed up Lucas Lepper for the absolute, drop us a DM. Let us, <laughs> let us know and, how and this then, went down. <laughs> man, and then and then you know, I said, okay, so let, let, let me go now. And then on Friday, I start eating more as soon as I see it. And then I was like, and then I talked to KP. He's my strength conditioning coach, you know. And then I talked to him. And then I said, man, I don't know if I'm going to do it. You know, like I was dropping weight already. I was on my weight already, you know, like doing diet. On my diet, it was really good. And then I was with my my student Giancarlo. I said, Giancarlo, man, who you know signed me up, man? I don't know, like. <laughs> and then we were like discussing. I said, I don't know if I'm gonna fight. And then I decided to fight it, the last minute, you know. And then on Friday night, I I was too light. And then on Friday night, I started eating a little bit more. I said, okay, if I'm gonna fight now, that wasn't look look good. I said, okay. I, I'm already like everybody posted that I'm gonna compete, you know. <laughs> if I if I decide to not compete now, so we're not looking good. Let me let me down, <laughs> let me go. And then on Friday, start eating more, you know. And then uh, and then I compete. And then I, when I finish the fights on Saturday, I was over two kilos still. Oh man. And, and awesome. then I have to do another diet to for to to make uh, to make weight on Sunday, you know. Hey Caleb, let's but get that uh, anyways, kind of so, match going here. Yeah, let's cue this thing up. All right. Yeah, I'm glad you signed up because you had some epic matches. This one's awesome. This one, the start of this match is awesome. Right into a single leg. Yeah, so I went to the single leg, but and then he counter, and then I think he put me down. <clears throat> Something that impressed me here is like you didn't, you don't really change your, you you go right to your your trusted sit up sweeps and single legs in this match a lot. Like you didn't really change yeah. your game for a big guy. No, no, I think is the is that is the type of game that works for all 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 kind of size. You know, I think is is very is very efficient for anyone. Oh, look at that he gra he grabbed my knee and put me down. <clears throat> So this counter that he he did it, I do as well. It's very very efficient one. Uh, but you guys are gonna see on the end of of the fight, I knew that he he's gonna do the same counter again, and then I counter back. But we we're gonna get there. So now I'm gonna start using like this sit up, try to hold the leg. But and then he's gonna try to block me, and then I start go to the De La Riva, and then I'm I'm gonna try to sweep him. He's one of the sweeps that I have been working a lot. 
recently, like maybe the last three years, two or three years. And uh, so as soon as he start, like I'm gonna try to to put him out of balance now. So as soon as he try to try to get up, is this time that I start try to find over there, but and then I have to sw switch again. You see my 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 left hand on the collar. Yeah. Mm. But I do this gi and and no gi as well. But um, at this time he blocks my leg over there. Look at that, my left leg. He holds my pants. The way that I wasn't able to put his uh, right leg over my my arm, I wasn't able to put his right foot out, and then and then I have to give up and try the technique that I was just talking about that I have been doing uh, recently. How did he feel on top? Because something that amazes me about Kynan and his base, he seems to be a really hard guy to sweep. Yeah, very, very heavy. So he now strong? I switch. Yeah, he's strong, man. Very strong. Is the year that he he got caught, right, on the steroids? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like this, he put, I like this one, you see? Yeah, so that one that I have been working a lot recently, trapping the ankle. But and then I switch now and start going to the sit-up guard, kind of, and then start going to the shin to shin. Nice entry there. And then there. I start going to the, to the X, and then I fall back again, and then I come up. And then I'm from there that. I start to finish, and then start going to the guillotine. And then I jump to escape, and then he tries to come there. up again. Yeah. So and then we disengaged over there. His 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 guillotine is very good. Yeah, Kainan's supposed to have a really strong guillotine. He has arm and yeah. arm guillotine. I think uh, uh, I met before he finished uh, Philippe Andrew, right, with the guillotine. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. I remember. I saw yeah. him do that that event. Yeah, yeah. It's one of his best moves for sure. So, man, after all that work, you didn't get two points. You're back on the feet. Yeah, that was like. <laughs> a lot, I did a lot, uh, but you know, I couldn't score anything. Did that tire you out at all, trying to sweep such a big guy for all that time? Yeah, because when you go up and down, up and down with the big guys, you can get tired a lot, you know. It's For sure. Consume a lot of energy. So what are you thinking here? You're going to want to pull again? I think I pull, right? I don't remember much. I tried to do the yeah. Morote, Sornagi, but... Kainan's another athlete that's really patient. You know, he, he really makes uh, fights go his pace. Now that you're down on points, you know, there's still plenty of time left. Do you feel like you have to open up your game a little bit? Or are you still committed to doing uh, your your pre pre precision and being very careful? Yes, I have, like, I I try to find the, the good time to, to start set up my attacks because, you know, like, one, one mistake is over. You have to be careful, you know, like you cannot, like, for example, pull guard, you cannot pull guard. You have, you have, you have, you have to have the right grips on the right place to start pull guard. Oh, look at that. I tried to, to go to the Morote. Yeah. Hmm. And then I was seeing like, this stand up game, I was feeling comfortable. And then and then I pull guard again. You know, like I think is is nice to a lot a lot of times you exchange a little bit the takedowns and then the guy's gonna start forget about it and then start pull guard again. So you put your opponent a little bit lost. Take him out with some takedown attempts. This is kind of your yeah, this so is kind of your position though, Lepre. You love this. You love this, right? This setup yeah, here on the cash. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like a lot of this one. 
And then now I just be patient to start get yeah, because sometimes the guy is gonna start putting the knee down and start to block me. But I just like little by little I start getting the position. And then, and then I have to grab the sleeve to break the grip from the pants. I come up and trap the leg. So good. Yeah, beautiful. That was a whole that was that whole sequence of beautiful. And you right to your right to your collar grip that you love. Yeah, I ha I have to trap that leg from outside because otherwise the guy can end up on the triangle, you know. So I have to trap instead. Put my leg behind his leg. I just trap from the front. Now, do you do you change your passing uh, strategy up at all when you're uh, passing somebody much bigger than you? No, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. I try to go and try to start put the pressure. I do not fight much, you know, I don't insist much one one position. And then he was able to sway, sweat me again. Not sweat me again, no, just the sweep, right? Uh, Lucas, did you feel the sweep coming? Out. Did you feel this did you feel the sweep coming? And did you was your was yes. your ambition like to get in a good grip right before that? Yeah, it's because like when I was trying to cut my knee when he was able to to block that and then usually i go to the other side smashing and go to the to the fold pass i was trying to do on him but i wasn't able to go he was just lifting me up you know quickly if it was somebody that on my size probably like i do all the time but you know as like probably his his legs stronger and and then he was able to lift me a little bit you know easy and then I, I wasn't able to stay in good base. Right here to your sit-up guard. So now I'm going to start set up kind of the same thing that I did before because I knew that, you know, I was able to, to do one time. So if you do one time, probably going to be able to do another time. Was like with the position ready. And then I start set up again, grab the sleeve, start to lift him up. His base is very strong, man. I, I wasn't able to lift him much. That was beautiful. Then you He's switch right to the setup guard on the other side, right to X guard. A, beautiful. A, yeah, I went to one side, he escaped one leg, and then I was already, uh, able to go to the other side immediately. What were they? They they almost gave him two points, huh? Wow. Yeah, so that was like, we, man, yeah. That was nice. And I'm going to go Beautiful now. Sequence. Now, now is, is the time that I hold his collar. When he tried to count and grab my knee again, and then I was able to count him back. Look that he was able. Yeah, to, he was yeah. trying to grab my. Uh, look that he was trying to grab my knee, and then I just like back back step. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, look now it's gonna be now. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab his collar. Oh, uh, now. Beautiful. <laughs> you do that yeah. a lot though, Lucas. Yeah. Right? Where you drag the collar off the single, right? Yeah, I just go and then I try to switch the you know one side to to the other. And start putting the guy out of balance, and sometimes I trap the guy's ankle behind behind the ankle and push the collar back. I do that a lot as well. On that point, my knee dislocated. What? Really? What? Like right now, right oh. now. Oh. My knee, my knee came off. Your knee came off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. So. so you fought the next day yeah. with a dislocated knee then? No, what was back was back in place already, but my knee was like this big. But wow. I don't I don't like to say much, you know, when I when I like, you know, what I have it, if I have injury or not. It looks like, you know, it's excuse, you know, but like I, I taught like uh nine seminars after the, this tournament with my knee like 
very big. I couldn't train with the guys. I couldn't do nothing, you know, on my seminars. So, yeah, so when, when he tried to trap my ankle like this, my knee came out. My knee came, came in and dislocated and came back in place, you know. So, as soon as I got the, the hotel, my knee was like, was uh what's the name like i was uh like pulsing like uh throbbing yeah pulsing pulsing yeah, yeah like was well, you know and then i i slap i put the pillows and then slap because it started like swelling very quickly and then i start putting the pillows and then i start putting my leg you know elevate a little bit i start like wake up on the middle of the night with the pain already you know but i, I didn't have any any pills to take it but uh anyway why did you so, decide to continue well, on on sunday i mean you you have nothing to so prove you've won a bunch of titles yes yeah so that feeling that i was able to get double gold you know and mm -hmm. then on the sunday on the on the morning i called my coach kp and then i spoke to him about like how was i was feeling i told him my need you know was swollen but was i was able to go you know that wasn't the problem the problem i think was the fatigue the fatigue that i was super tired because after the fights i have to lose weight and then i think that put me even more tired because i couldn't recover uh so that was the main problem when i wake up you know when i woke up on sunday it wasn't much my knee my knee was swollen but it was fine but the, the the fatigue was was the was the problem because since my first fight i I, I wasn't able to like fight well so you guys if you guys see my first fight on the on the on my on my division the guy like full guard swept me in like in five seconds you know my leg was like shaking like was was very like and then my coach he told me he said Lucas look you're not feeling well what are, I'm gonna advise you is hydrate eat sleep and fight just the final of the open and then i was arguing to, with him i said man but i i'm feeling that i can't get the double goal i i have the feeling you know i'm already on the final for the open and just four more fights on the on the on the lightweight division i think i'm going to be able to do it he said look look rest man rest hydrate and fight just the final of the open and then I didn't listen to him on my first fight on my weight when the guy swept me and then I couldn't sweep the guy back easily. Man. The guy gave me a hard time and then I was feeling tired and then came up on my head, man, why I didn't listen to my coach, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, but I think ever, you know, every time that you try to get something big, especially on my size, you know, lightweight and start get like double gold on the on the major tournaments, it's gonna be a risk, you know, it's gonna be a challenge because you don't know how you're gonna feel, if you're gonna hurt something or you know, it's just like a, a risk that you have to take it, you know. Is that uh the Levi match you had in the final, is that one you would like to have another shot at when you're you know, hadn't fought the absolute the next day and your your body's feeling good? I'm sorry, say again, please. Would, would you like to have another match with Levi, like where you hadn't fought in an absolute yeah. the day before and your your body felt a little bit better? Yeah, so I think it's like, you know, uh, my fight with him and fight with Gustav as well. You guys, like, if you guys watch, like, even though my fights, all my fights on Sunday, since, I, like, I won my fights before my division, you guys, like, you can realize that wasn't much myself over there fighting because, you know, I wasn't much there, you know. But, uh, you know, for sure, like, you know, for both finals, it was, like, exhausting that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do much my game. As you guys can see, I had myself at the World Championship that I can like start like you know fight forward and go to the submissions, and that's the way that I fought on Saturday. You know, for example, uh, when I fought the World Championship, I was uh, visualize myself. You know, I didn't fight. I didn't think about okay, I'm gonna fight Levi again. 
I was five. I was visualize myself with my daughter, you know, on the podium. That because I I I believe that if you if you think too much about one person, you know, I think you can freeze. You can you're not trained very well. You're not you're not you. You know, and then that's the main idea. You know, for example, every year I try to focus one thing and visualize one thing that I, you know, that I have in mind it. And then I never vi visualize uh, my, my, my opponents, you know, I always I visualize my family, now my daughter, you know, always something else besides my opponents. Because if like lightweight division, you have like maybe eight good guys that you, they can win, you know, if I start, if I start looking for like study everybody, that's when I start getting crazy, you know. I have to focus on me. That's my main focus, right? And uh, every year, guys, you know, like I know how the the media it is have to be like that, you know. You guys have to put someone, hey, who's gonna beat lap this year? And then you put <laughs> Levi. And then on the other year was. On the other year was the hey, tutorials. Hey, you sound like Bushesha, Lepre. You sound like Bushesha. Like, hey, the media has to talk about and these new guys because they're new, exciting, and sexy, but they're forgetting yeah. I'm the greatest lightweight of all time. I'll say yeah. it to you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then I remember, and then the other year was like Ed, uh, Edwin Najmi, you know, because he he won the, the, the Pan Ams. And then he said, man, okay, maybe Ed, and Edge Edge is going to win. And then other year was JT Tours because he was winning the Europeans and the Pan Ams. And then we were able to, to meet at the awards. But every year is something, is somebody new, you know? And uh, you guys can, like, see, uh, you know, I have winning the World Championship for the last, since 2014, you know, the last six years. But my main goal is not focus on my opponents you know i think that's the biggest the biggest uh uh how can i say my biggest strategy you know is not focus anybody you know is like i don't listen much what this what the social medias are saying or or like you know i don't like also like when people put me on the favorites oh lucas like is the favorite to win the the lightweight you know i don't like that as well i try to ignore that i try to train look at myself and see what i can improve it you know so and this year was was the same you know La last year sorry last year what wasn't different you know I, wa I was focused myself i was focused on my on my family on my students you know and then i just did my work over there you know I was very very focused you know very like breaking records on my on my category you know like that was my main thing to do in that year and uh and when i saw like you know levi was disqualified on the, the second fight right i don't remember his first or second fight the second second, second, I, fight. Mm. second, I, think. second I think that was that was you know of course i would like to meet him again over there you know and fight him have the you know because at the europeans even though i was tired was by referee the, the decisions was 2-1 right yeah. even though that i wasn't on, like on my on my perfect conditioning and uh was tight okay and then also and then i was already in mind of course maybe i would like you know meet him over there maybe on the final but when when i saw the bracket but uh it's very shame that you know if you train so much, man, to go to the highest stage in jiu-jitsu, it's the World Championship, and then you got disqualified because you're not one fight. You're like, you know, it's like, it's like, you some you train so much, you know. Like for example, myself, like if like I have, I remember that uh, JT and I back 2016, both of us like we were trying to exchange takedowns. You know, was like very active fight, even though the referee started giving us a penalty, right? When I saw that was two penalties to both sides and one more we're gonna get disqualified, I just pull guard. You know, I just pull guard and let the fight go because someone have to take action, right? So how I'm gonna get disqualified in the world championship that I, I was trained like for two, three, three months straight 
to get the Ovedere and got disqualified because I didn't want to fight, you know. So, and then that was, was I, you know, my opinion on this, you know. I think, like, if someone, if someone get disqualified on, on the World Championship, man, have to be very shame about it, you know. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't want to go out like that. Another thing you brought up during that last match, when I asked you uh, if Kainan was strong, you said, yeah, this is the year that he tested positive. So, I mean, this is something you've been very vocal about before. What, what do you feel about the performance-enhancing drugs, uh, steroids, and jiu-jitsu currently? Man, to be honest, Mike, I like, I don't, it's like, bother me some way, you know, but I fought so many, you know, so many opponents already. We cannot assume that they will take because you cannot prove it because, you know, it's really hard to say and accuse someone that is using that's not, you know. Uh, but it's so, something that I I got used to already, right? To fight somebody that's using. And uh, all these years, like, competing, you know, I have, like, the same type of body i'm not you know like i like to work out i like to be i like to eat clean i like you know uh for me so a lot of time it's very frustrating you know to do everything right to don't cheating you know and then you can see some athletes to get a better per performance they can train harder because they're like under oh, steroids because they can you know they don't feel much tired as someone that is not taking uh, that put me a little frustrating, you know, and then put me a little bit more like sad is seeing like younger guys, a lot of times they're, they're trying to use as well because they're seeing the top guys using this. They, they think that that's going to be the right way to, to get it, you know, to use it, to get on that point one day. But, uh, of course, guys, it's not just like steroids, you know. Uh, we we can see that a lot of times, like the guys using other type of drugs as well, uh, you know, besides steroids. That's not that that's not right as well, right? I think you know, you have to be you have to play fair. You have to you have to play you know clean and fair with everyone. Lucas, I think you're talking but, about something. You're saying like, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm just talking that, but why, like, you know, IBJJF taking, like, a huge, a huge step already, you know, testing the champions, but they have to open for everybody that is going to be on the podium as well. I think that's the, you know, the next goal. I think they should looking for that now. Uh, and then eventually, you know, like, other tournaments, ADCC as well, maybe they, they should test as well because you can see the guys, like, two months before ADCC is one size and then get over there, the guys has three times bigger. They look like, a little you know? different, yeah. <laughs> a little different. Like, You're I like think, hey, uh, that's I... your body type in IBJJF Rolls mode? And then yeah. once it goes to ADCC mode, it's like, boom! <laughs> yeah. What happened? I, I, what happened? Yeah, I, I think like, man, I think the, the athletes do like everything to, to win. For sure, on the future, gonna like they they they're gonna pay for it, you know. It's not just like, for example, I do jujitsu. I'm a competitor, right? But I do jujitsu as well for the lifestyle, you know, for training. Man, I wanna train for like long journey, you know, like. Uh, so, I'm not seeing jujitsu just like a a competition side, you know. So that's like a lot of times the guys do everything as possible to win no matter what no matter they have to take it you know so that is very sad very sad to see it you know like i see i think little by little we have to put you know jiu -jitsu more organized more professional on this side right as you start growing and start get more super fights and get more events like you know adcc world championships and you know like big stage at least on the big stage they have to uh, be more professional on that side of the steroid, you know. Otherwise, is it's gonna be a mess on the on the future. Luke, Lucas, on the steroids thing, on the steroids thing, like you're a part of a really big team, and there's a bunch of really big big teams, right? And like any big team, you can't control everything, right? Like that's just unrealistic. 
but what what's your what's your take on like younger generation kids like actually taking it and you know of course the the big teams or the actual even just the direct coach could tell them no right but you know the, but then also the kids can still be taking it just because they're like hey well every 15 year old kid's taking it and they're winning blue belt world championships so i'm gonna take it and you know my my coach or my team leader loves that i'm getting gold medals and adding to the team trophy you know so you're you you, you don't you don't have to deal with that because you're not at the head of a team, but you're an athlete and you have to go against some of these, you know, future black belts or brown belts that are ultimately going to be trying to take, take down everything that you've worked hard to do by yourself all natural, you know? Yeah. You is, I think it's like, it's really hard. I think it's the, it's how you like you educated, you know, you have to like educate people you know, to to do the right things, right? You have to, you know, like be talking and, you know, you know, you have to like show the examples. But it's like for me, it's really hard if the organization doesn't do something right, if they're not testing, if like if somebody's not afraid to fall, to, to fail, they're still going to uh, take it, you know? If they have a little bit concern, they're gonna be like you know a lot of times they they don't care about the 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 health issue they care like about like maybe oh, i'm gonna be caught you know and this and that sponsors and you know think about like other things besides the the, the healthy problem in the future you know but it's really hard to, to to control it's really hard to control you know like i talk with a lot of you know my students about it you know I always like I tell them my example, you know, say, man, I didn't take anything all these years. Is, you know, you guys believe it. It's, it's possible to get there without taking anything, you know. That is my message to to to, to them. But of course, if it, they if they want to take it, I'm not able to to do much as well, you know. So for sure, that is like I try to do my part. I try to do my my part and open their eyes. What is good, what is not, examples, and the, and then the rest is gonna be on them. All right, Bear, yeah, I, I got a question a... for you from a, a, yeah, a go, sponsor's go. perspective. How would you react if one of your athletes tested positive and got the suspension, Bear? Would that would how would that affect your relationship with them? You think? No, it totally change it. You know, just because like athletes are paid on you know representing the brand and being a forward facing portion of the brand. You know, so any company whenever you're putting something out and you're not playing by the rules and you jeopardize the the image of a brand per se you know and i mean you could look at our ha athletes through a span of time and um you know whenever there's an issue we have to address it just like any other company has to address it but like i just don't think it's i just don't think it's right that um you don't play by the rules and these are the rules that are set right and just as long as people are playing within the rules that are set which is the federation and doping then you know, that's the rules. It may not be my rules, but that's the standard, you know, but I think, I think the, we've talked about this before on past shows, like for me, it's the, the steroid use in the sport. Um, it's not allowed, right? Like, so, you know, pretending like it's not a part of like the culture and pretending, you know, just if you're not black belt world champion, you're not being tested on the finals, which the Federation's doing a really, really good job in progressing that. Um, but, you know, people are taking it from like 14, 12 years old to like, 18 years old and then by the time they get off black belt they're off of it you know but at that point they just like smashed a bunch of people's dreams in between that time you know so all right so let's move on to another match this one's from uh this one sort of plays into a couple things that we, we've already touched on uh your your single leg your great single leg and then your capoeira that you use to defend sometimes so this is you and hanato from the uh world finals this is one of my favorite uh sequences basically ever so if you want to cue this one up caleb it's definitely one of the most exciting finals matches we've seen at Worlds as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this fight was like uh, Renato, he did a really good campaign, like, you know, this word, uh, these words, and uh, I knew, like, he was, like, very uh, athletic. He moved it a lot, you know. He does, like, if you watch, like, his other fights, he does a lot, but at, at the same time, he doesn't finish much, you know? He doesn't, like, uh, how, how can I explain better? 
he doesn't uh, finalize something, right? Okay. So like he move it, he try he try a lot of things at the same time, but he doesn't, you know, like uh, he wasn't able to to finish the sequence. Sort of the opposite of your style, where it's all about you know being patient and. Yeah, so I tried to get the, the because I knew that he's gonna like mistake it, you know, like it was about timing because the way his game is, he opens a lot of opportunities, you know. Uh, but Lucas, I, he's, there's a huge there's a huge uh, detail. Sorry to pause you on that, but like I noticed you do that a lot. Is right off of someone going out, off of a sequence, and Hanato's probably one of the smartest competitors in the world today, especially with the IBJJF rule set. He always out he always circles outside towards out of bounds. But I always notice whenever you see somebody do that, you always circle them back in. Is that always a part of your circle strategy back. when they're running out of bounds? Yeah. 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 So that that's just like, you know, is the thing like on this mat, you guys can see bad, like a lot. Every time like we're trying to go outside, I just turn myself and put myself outside and try to put my opponent inside it back again. All of that, try to you do turn. that with everybody. It, I, you see that a lot. Yeah. When, most people don't pick up that detail, but you're one of the very yeah. few people I, I always see your angle always turns them back in, which other people just run completely out of bounds. Yeah. But no. on the yes, I, I, I do this a lot. And then I especially with the the counter for the Sumiga Ash, when he yeah. switched the grip and grabbed my sleeve, that that's the time that I start to extend my arm that I grab his collar. Because when I when I do that, his sumigaesh is gonna be like uh, slow, slowly, right? Uh, if I pull the collar, I think is is this one now. Look my right hand on, on the collar. I start pushing away as soon as he use his left hand to grab my my other sleeve. When he grabs there, and then is the time that I'm gonna start pushing his collar. Because and then when he tried to go to the Sumigayesh, he's gonna lose the the timing. So, so you did two cartwheels here to, to counter the Sumigayeshi off your single leg. How did you end up starting to do this? Is this something that you've practiced yeah, a lot? Or? Yes, I do this all the time when the guy do, doesn't grab my uh, my sleeve, my uh, the hand that I, I'm grabbing the collar. Ah. When he when he grabs the other side, the the left one. And then it's because my right hand is free. But I do a lot of cartwheels as well, holding the collar too. I don't post on the floor. You just post with the collar. So that's grip. one Yeah, that that's one of the counter that I use a lot. Now this is uh going back to your capoeira days, huh? Yes, that for sure helped me a lot. So uh you can go ahead and kill that clip now, Caleb. All right, now th that's one of your world finals. Uh, I mean, you're six-time world champ. You've won a lot of big stuff. I think something that we wanted to talk with you about uh, a little bit is uh, you've had such a legendary career. What do you think the biggest win of your career has been so far, Lucas? Is the biggest, uh, I'm sorry. I think the, uh, the your biggest, biggest the win knowledge. so far of your career. You've had so many, but what do you think was the moment that you look back on that maybe you're most proud of or felt the best? Man, I think uh, man, I have so many, man. Let me see here. I think one, uh, I think in 2007, the year that I won my first world title as a, as a black belt, I fought uh, Celso Vinicius on the semifinal. That for sure, like I actually that fight, I have to study him. I study him a lot on that fight because uh, I was able to caught him on the knee bore because he's a like he play like type of half guard so so hard to to escape, you know, and. Uh, and then I have to make some strategy for him. And uh, on that time, he was running to get his third world title. So he was the the, the favorite guy to win, you know. And then I was just one, one, one more guy came up from brown belt. So I was like very new on the division. 
and uh, I had like five fights and won four by submission. I had amazing performance, and then on the semifinal, when I when I when I actually like when I fought on Saturday, I felt great, and then I came back to the hotel, and then on the next day. On the next day, when I saw that two mats, that two air areas, right, two mats over there, and then, man, that I start like feeling, feeling. Uh, I was very, very young, you know. I was 22 years old. I was like very nervous. I said, man, I passed, and now I'm here now. So that today is going to be my day. Uh, so I have to beat this guy, you know. I have to beat him to win because I knew that if I beat him. Of course, the final was tough as well, a really tough opponent, but I knew that he was the toughest opponent. So I said, man, I need to beat him, I need to beat him. And then I keep that on my mind, say, man, I'm gonna beat him. And then, so that was like the, the strategy that I made was perfect. You know, I was end up on the knee board and then I was able to catch on the knee board on him. So it was amazing feeling, that was the, the time that you know, I think is one of the the most important tournament and fight, you know, to show to the world that you know I I was coming to the light to, to the light day division. It's kind of a related question here, Lucas. Um, you've had you know a very long career at black belt. You fought a lot of guys many times. Do you have any rivals that stand out and like lessons that you've taken from them? I'm thinking of guys like JT Torres, where you've had back and forth. The Andrew Lowe was a big uh, name in your career as well. You know what? What kind of um, lessons have you taken from those those hard fought battles? Man, it's just like I, uh, you know, I grew a lot for sure. You know, so for example, when I put on my mind that I would like. Uh, I would like to break records on my on the on the lightweight division. I was like, I knew that it's gonna come like, you know, I'm gonna have ups and downs, you know. Uh, so, and then like, I learned a lot for it during these years, you know. Like, it took me seven years to win the second world title since my first one. You know, I won my first one 2007, and my second one. Uh, in 2014 that I did the final with JT and uh, man it took that that long gap you know uh, to win again and after that I, I kept winning every year but was something more mental you know I just had to to believe on myself a little bit more because I was losing my fights I was like taking second place third place second place you know was something that I, I need to adjust it right and uh, and then I start to adjust. It's not my technical part or my, con my or my conditioning part, but was a little bit more mental, right? I was putting too much pressure on me. That man, I have to win. I cannot lose. That type of pressure on me was killing me, right? And then as soon as I start like putting that pressure off and say, man, just let me go. Show my jujitsu show you know what i have to show and that's it and then everything starts flow more right and then i was able to win everything and for sure like you know the guys that i fought a lot you know as leandro low i think jt Torres is the guy that i fought most i think we fought man on my if i'm not wrong i think we fought uh 14 times wow so 14 times. I didn't realize I was, that. I, I, was, yeah. I thought it was like seven or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was able to win 11. He was able to win three, you know. But even though, like, I was able to win more times, that's like, man, our fights always a war, you know. Like, always, like, you know, uh, with him, I was, like, super tough. I respect him a lot. Uh, you know, the other guy was, was Leandro Lowe as well, uh, Celso Vinicius. All these guys, you know, put me like, put myself to train more, to focus more. You know, I think you know, uh, for sure, help help me to grow in all aspects. Very nice. Uh, we're uh, just got a few minutes left in the show, uh, Lucas. Do you want to uh, maybe a little closing statement to your fans and everybody out there, everybody watching? Just anything you want to say to them? 
man, it's like, you know, I really appreciate it. Everyone that, you know, chair for me, uh, you know, like I, I'm almost on the end of my career, you know, like I try to, you know, I, I don't know when I'm going to stop it. You know, I don't know. It's going to be next year or in two years. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, but you know, like I try to do my best to impact the, the sport and the people really well, you know, impact my students, my association, my team, you know, my sponsors, you know, like my family. I think like, you know, I try to, to be a good example, you know, for everybody, right? And uh, do the, the right things, you know, I think that's important, you know, and uh, yeah, I, re I really appreciate everybody, you know, all the care and the love all these years. And uh, for sure, we're going to have more, more to go. We, we're not, you know, there yet, but almost. I like hearing that. So when things get going back again, it's safe to say we'll see you sometime uh, next season, whenever that starts you going. Heard that. You heard that one more. That means the lightweights can't get another championship until the king retires. <laughs> Sorry. Lucas, man, oh, thank you so man. much for calling in. We really appreciate the time. Nice. We have a crazy week coming up. We have... Tomorrow, Hodger Gracie and Braulio. Same day. Two yeah. of the all-time greats, two ADCC absolute champs, both calling in at the same time. Then yeah. who we got Wednesday? We got Ali. Muhammad Ali, Cyborg, and Wagner on Thursday. Cyborg and Wagner Thursday. Friday is Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo. And then the next week, I mean, if you you guys have seen on the bottom of the screen, we have a bunch of people, Gordon, Gary Tonin, Andre Gaval, JT, Buchecha, Pergisa. Basically, everybody's calling in the next couple of weeks. So it's going to be a, a really uh, fun uh, group of shows. Hey, Lucas, you got anything uh, – any questions for Hodger or Braulio tomorrow? Anything you want us to ask him? <laughs> Man, I actually I'm a big fan of both. You know, Hodger and Braulio, they're amazing athletes. But besides that, they're amazing persons as well. That counts a lot. You know, uh, I always look to the guys that, you know, like, if the guy has really good jiu-jitsu, but, man, they're like, they're like sometimes like he's not a, a good Pearson, sometimes they do a little bit more for entertainment, whatever, you know, but even though, like, I don't watch much those guys, you know, I think I respect a lot, though, like, Brawley and Hoyer because, man, they're, like, they're a big example to follow as a person as well, besides the, their athlete uh, career, and then, like, you know, is yeah, so, uh, let me see, any questions? Uh, Okay, so maybe for Roger, you know, what he felt when he dislocated J Jacare's arms, you know, what he Ooh, felt on that, on that moment. That's a good question. So, <laughs> yeah. Good one, that's so a good one. So he, like, he, he felt maybe he, he needs to let it go or he tried to keep going, like what, what he passed, you know, on that moment, what he passed on his mind. That I think would be good, you know, to, to know about question. it. Yeah, we'll ask him that one. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a great question. All right, yeah, yeah. We, we should probably make this a little uh, recurring theme. Yeah, recurring yeah. theme. Everybody gets yeah, to ask a question for call. the person the next day. But uh, all right, Lucas, thank you for so much for calling right. in, man. We got to get thank you to call in again Ken soon. Jazz, appreciate it. Thank you, boss. Was yeah. so see you, you guys safe, on the next you. episode uh, tomorrow yeah. afternoon at five thirty. Five thirty Eastern. Hi, Gracie Braulio. Tune in. See you guys. Yo.